Good morning, guys, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Yeah, she's a runner. Now I got 10,000 projects to do. <laughs> well, I thought what we do today, I've kind of cleaned the car off. It's been sitting under a tarp for a little while, so I thought what we'd do today is give it a bath, first of all, uh, kind of wipe it down and clean it up a little bit, and then... Uh, I thought what we do today is do a couple things. Number one, I'm gonna get the hood to fit uh, so it actually goes down. Um, and right now, if we look at it, it's uh, the uh, the hood doesn't close because of that issue right there. It's uh, a little bit too long on this end, and it's a little bit too short on that end. So obviously, the hood needs to get moved back um, just so it can close, if nothing else. Um, so we're going to work on that today and I want to get in and see if we can get the timing set on it. Um, it's, I just got it rough set. I have never put a light on it and I actually have Travis's timing. I actually borrowed Travis's light. So I really need to get that back to him. So, uh, plan today is to, yeah, do this hood and get the timing set. And if we have a little bit of extra time, maybe what we'll do is we'll scratch up these rust spots or the bare metal spots that have gotten rusted and maybe get a little primer on them. So that's the plan for today. Um, I have been driving it around quite a bit, um, just back and forth in the yard and up down the street and whatnot. Still doesn't have exhaust on it. Uh, I think because I've got the dissimilar exhaust manifolds, I think what I'm gonna do is actually like just take them off the car and go to a muffler shop and be like, here, make me ends for these. Cause I've got one, I'll show you guys when I take them off, but um, I've got one side that's like it's a it's a two bolt deal, and the other side's like a three bolt deal, like a collector, like more for a header type collector. So I need two different kind of down tubes, and what I'd like to do is go to a muffler shop and have them make up that connection for me between the manifold and the pipe, and then give me a little you know give me a little bit of down tube, you know like maybe that much down tube, and then just have it bend and go back. Uh, and then I can pick it up underneath with a muffler and a little out pipe and then we'll just come out like right ahead of the rear tires for now uh, we won't run them like that for too long so I won't put side pipes on it but just enough to get it driving so um, with any luck maybe I'll pop the manifolds off here in the next couple of weeks and and we'll get those tubes see what see what it would cost to make those tubes up at, at an exhaust shop somewhere and see see what they'd want Nowadays, they probably want $1,000 to do just that. So we <laughs> might have to budget that in. But anyway, um, all right, well, enough talking. Let's get to work. All right, well, welcome to my incredibly dirty engine compartment. Jesus, we have the timing set on this. We're gonna clean the motor up today. <laughs> um, all right, well, this is what we got. And uh, we're gonna be working on getting getting that all put together and getting the hood to fit correctly. So first thing to do is let's get the timing light in here and we'll figure out what all we got to do. Okay. So what we got here guys is a timing light from Harbor Salvage Freight. Um, these work perfectly good. This one has a, a dial in the back so you can kind of dial in some delay or I'm sorry, some, um, uh, degree, sorry, <laughs> not delay. Um, so you can dial in uh, your degrees, it's a degreed time and light. So um, I don't know how many of you guys have done this before, but basically there's just really three super easy connections. There's, uh, you hook up the power, so that goes to your battery. And then that guy goes to your number one spark plug and it needs to be facing a certain way. So see that, it wants number one that way. So, so you're looking for it to go in the direction of that arrow, right? The, the voltage in the line. So even though this is a little backwards here, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so guys, let's get this hooked up. And the car started and see where we're at timing wise. Oh God. Oh, there we go. Okay. Negative, positive. And there's our lead out. Fell down again. Number one with the wire going that way. So let's go. Our wire's deconflicted here. 
There we go. All right. So number one going towards the cylinder. Number one. Ugh. There we go. All right. So that's just your induction pickup. That just picks up the, the voltage coming through the line from the distributor. So what well, ideally we'll be able to look down in here, see the time and mark, and we'll just kind of adjust the distributor until we think where we're at. So first thing to do is going to be fired up and let's just see where we're at. Make sure everything is clear of everything before you start these too. And the last thing you want to do is rip a bunch of wires off getting caught in an alternator cooling fan or any of those components in there. We got the timing all knocked out. Let's uh, get to grips with this disaster in here. There's a lot going on in here and there's a lot that's gonna be going on in here. We're gonna be back in here about a hundred times between now and then. Just a couple things to point out to you guys real quick. So right off the bat, um, ultimately <clears throat> this fuel pump, this mechanical pump right here, doesn't, doesn't really work. Um, 
the uh, I don't know if the arm is not if the the rocker arm isn't long enough or what the deal is but it's not engaging so uh, at some point I want to run a mechanical fuel pump I don't want to rely on the electric one uh, because ultimately you just wind up having a ton of troubles with them and they're kind of more of a pain in the ass than they're worth um, so ultimately that will get replaced but right now it's just kind of, kind of there because I don't have a block off plate so um, but you can just see, I mean, it's just, you know, we're, we're out under a shade tree and it's dirty and it gets dirty. Also, uh, when we were having all the issues with the alternator, uh, here, when we couldn't figure out why we weren't getting a, a charge out of it, um, I was messing around because Oldsmobile, for some reason, honest to God, guys, if you want to know why automakers in the seventies were dying, look at this rat's nest of crap. This is all extra wire. This goes into this relay, and that's where my key buzzer is, is in here. Um, and I had this all organized and wrapped and like done up uh, when I did the, when I ran the engine harness for the alternator, for the wiring for it. And when we were getting into not being able to figure out why the thing wasn't charging, I kind of uh, tore all the tape off of this and, and went back in and, and tried to figure out if I had something Kaflubledied in here. That's a technical term, and um, and obviously we didn't find anything because the alternator was not the one that was on here was not internally regulated, and that's why we weren't getting a charge. But I need to clean all this crap back up, um, and just do some general housekeeping in here. There's still a ton of stuff to do. Ultimately, that battery is going to get mounted in the trunk, uh, but for now it'll stay here. And I need to get some kind of a little hold down strap or something on it. Probably just do a bungee for right now to make sure it doesn't completely depart the immediate area where it's supposed to stay in. Um, but uh, so, and then we've got the windshield washer bottle that still goes back there that I'm doing the fiberglass repair on. Um, we don't have a burp tank on it as of right now, um, but we do have a burp tank, again, donated by you know, ever-present Travis. Um, and I showed you guys this in an earlier episode, but this is just a really bitchin' overflow tank that he had. I think he was going to use this on his race car or on the IROC. I can't remember, which is also a race car, but more on the street. Um, I don't know where this came from. I think he told me and I probably forgot. But anyway, with very little modification, this thing's going to live kind of right in this area. And you guys can see that's just going to fit so nice on there. So it's just a matter of making up some mounts and then getting it connected. So for now, we're not doing that today. We're gonna to take this out of here um, so we can clean. That's where the old fuel canister used to be for the emission system, uh, the carbon canister or whatever they call that thing, the return canister. Um, and then, oh, let me set that down. And then we still have things like the vacuum reservoir still needs mounted. Um, the transmission dipstick is not mounted. It's just hanging there. So there's a, <laughs> there is a lot of work to do under here still, but Step one is maybe get it clean so we can actually see what the hell it is we have here. So uh, I think this is a perfect opportunity to do some time lapse. And uh, yeah, we'll get to cleaning. <laughs> Hey guys, I gotta jump on here and do a little bit of voiceover. Sorry about that. When I did the breaks, um, we didn't actually shoot any video. Well, that's not entirely true. We did shoot some video, but uh, the GoPro malfunctioned and we didn't get the footage off the card. So I've got some stills here for you guys to take a look at. Basically, just to go through it, um, yeah, the entire brake system was essentially you know, plugged solid. All the lines had uh, dust and remnants and garbage in them. The proportioning valve, was completely occluded. Um, the calipers needed completely rebuilt. The wheel cylinders needed torn apart. Um, you can see here in some of the pictures, the bleeder screws were all occluded, um, pretty much unusable. So uh, because we just don't have any money on this project, I basically tore everything apart, cleaned it up as best I could, blew it out with some shop air, kind of got it all reinstalled, and presto, we have brakes. I bled them out and uh, so yeah, we're not using the emergency brake to uh, stop the car anymore. We actually have real brakes now. All right, let's get back to the video. 
Hey guys, all right, it's the next morning. Um, so we fast forwarded a little bit. So I got some stuff to tell you guys. Um, so we got the engine compartment cleaned up, which you can see it looks a little bit better. It's not great, but at least it's acceptable for now. Once everything is dialed in 100%, then um, I'm gonna come in and obviously do like a full on detailing, we'll clean all this shit up and all of this will get, it'll actually look decent I'll, I'll get all the spark plug wires loomed and all the rest of that stuff but anyway there you go that's kind of the finished product from washing yesterday pretty happy with that um just kind of overall cleaned the car wiped it down and stuff which seems weird right because it's like just nasty and rusty and all this kind of shit you're like why why wipe it down why keep it clean yeah i don't know man i'm just that way uh i don't know what to tell you guys i like I like having a clean car, even when it's a project car that you're in the middle of working on. So, um, anyway, she's out looking good this morning. Super happy. It's Sunday morning. It's beautiful out. You guys can see it's absolutely a gorgeous day under our shade trees this morning. Fantastic. This is our garage. This is our church as we work outside. Um, so working outside. So here's the good news. Got the shifter linkage squared away. So it actually goes all the way into drive now. Um, although, um, it's still not going into third, I get first and second, but not third. And I think part of that is because I just don't have enough room, um, to run this thing out. So, you know, basically I've got like just over here on the other side of the block, I've got about eh, maybe a little bit more than a quarter mile, uh, to mess with it. And this is, I, I really wish I knew more of the history of this engine because I'm telling you, it's acting like almost as though like I'm the one breaking it in it the more I drive it the stronger it gets I mean I can tell this thing's going to be a monster when I was when I had my uh, 84 um I had built a 403 for it and the first few times I drove it around I was like oh my god this thing's gonna be a pooch it's terrible and um you know that motor uh it was one of the fastest strongest running motors uh, I ever, I ever had built, but initially the first few times you drove it around, you break it in the cam and stuff, boy, it was, uh, that was not an experience I was happy about. I'm like, man, I don't know what's going to go on with this deal. But anyway, it turned out to be a fire breathing motor. So after doing a few more, uh, motors like that, you kind of figure out, Hey, uh, I know what this thing, you know, you can tell from what it feels like when you're driving it to what it'll ultimately be once you get it broke in and all the components get used to working with each other and all that kind of stuff. There is absolutely, I am convinced, uh, that there is absolutely, um, uh, a procedure or I don't know. It's like I talked about in the one, uh, fits behind the wheel episode where I was discussing like having a relationship with the car. And I think the car has to redefine itself as well. You know I mean? The last time this thing ran, it had a bone stock motor in it and all the components on it. And, you know, and that's this, you know, resurrected 20 plus years sitting in dry storage in the desert, you know, with a $600 used motor, um, that apparently has some rebuild on it, but whoever rebuilt it didn't know what head gaskets to put on or anything else I mean, I, because we went through all that shit, you know. Um, but anyway, so uh, back to the update. Sorry, I get sidetracked so easy. So we got the shifter uh, to where it gets all three gears now, and that was actually a, a linkage problem. So where the, where the uh, rod comes down and attaches to the, there's a little arm on the side. There's a shaft comes out the side of your, transmission and then there's a little arm that you mount to that and on top of that arm where my fingernail is that's where the rod comes in and connects um and it's a it's an aluminum rod with a heim joint and a jam nut and that jam nut had walked itself from the rod end down to the to the joint end and it was conflicting between the where it where it all came together the jam nut was like down on that tab so it wouldn't let me get it all the way <clears throat> into the correct position so now i've got access to all the gears uh, park, reverse, neutral, drive, two, and one. Um, and it shifts from first to second, but I can't get third yet. And I, and I honestly, I don't know if I can't get third because I can't hear it or I can't feel it. I don't have a tack in this thing yet. I mean, there's so much to do, but, um, it just feels like when you're driving it, it goes like from first to first to second, and then just kind of hangs, hangs out there. Um, and so, um, I don't know. I probably need to check the fluid again. You know, this thing is in the configuration that we had it in to just to get it to move for the 40th anniversary. So this is one of those deals now where you got to come in and now all those pieces that you shortcut, like it does, still does not have a transmission cooler. I just have the cooler lines 
uh, looped underneath. So, you know, you need to get a tranny cooler in it. You need to make sure you have enough fluid in the transmission. I mean, I put enough in it that it moved. I never checked it after that. So, you know, it does get good gear engagement. It does do what it's supposed to do, but it's just one of those things that, um, you know, you're like, we haven't really double checked everything. You know what I mean? So it, so it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a, a different, uh, different deal uh, when it comes to that. But <clears throat> so there's a lot yet to do details to work out and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to, we're going to be efforting that and working on that as we go forward. I do think I, the more I think about it, the more I like the idea of just popping these intake or <laughs> intake, yeah, just popping these exhaust manifolds off, uh, on both sides, just taking them off and then taking them to a, to an exhaust shop rather than a trying to drive this thing with open exhaust all the way to a shop or B putting this car on a stretcher um, and then trying to get it to an exhaust shop. I don't really want to do either of those things. Um, so if I could get just on the manifold and just on the business end, if I could get them to make that coupling up, whatever that is, cause it's remember it's two different ones. I got the, the two bolt, like two and a half inch one on this side. And then on the other side, it's some weird modified. When I pull them out, I'll show them to you guys, uh, which will probably be the next episode. But, <clears throat> but, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those manifolds in, have an exhaust shop, make the connections for them. Give me about, pff, I don't know, maybe eight, 10 inches of down tube. Um, and with a 90 degree bend in it. And then give me about a foot, foot and a half behind that so I can attach to it. And my plan is going to be, basically, I'm just going to come, uh, let's see if I can get an angle here. So the idea would be, so the exhaust comes out right in here. Um, so we'd get the down tube and then come back about a foot. And then my plan would be to just run a little bit of pipe and then like a bullet muffler. Um, and then a little bit more pipe and probably a 90 degree to come out right in front of the tire. Because ultimately... This thing's going to wind up with a big, huge freaking side pipe, side pipes on here. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, <laughs> I'm really tempted to put like a NASCAR boom tube on the end of it and do like more like a round car exhaust, but I really want that street machine vibe. So the exhaust that we're going to do for now is just going to be temporary anyway. So, you know, it's kind of six, five and pick them. Um, so one of the, some of the items that we have on the list, other than the myriad of things to do in there is we need to get to grips with some of the body work. So we, I'm, I'm starting to turn my attention towards, okay, what do I want to do first here? So obviously the grills need some work. We need to repaint them, clean them up. I want to get these little bumper rubber bumper snubbers repainted. Um, I'm probably am going to weld the, well, not probably, I definitely, at some point, I'm going to weld all that up on the front of the bumper and get rid of that front license plate mount because I don't run front license plates ever for any reason, period. Um, so that can go away. But as far as body work is concerned and the nose of this, what happened was while it was in storage, someone tried to get into the hood and because the, you guys can see the hood release cable's a little shot and I got some news for you on that as well. Um, I think what they did is they put a pry bar in here and they pried down. And when they did, they literally look at, I mean, it's just, it's just fucking destroyed, man. So I am going to have to fix that. Good news is I'm really, 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 really good with fiberglass. Not to brag, but trust me. Oh, uh, you fellas have nothing to worry about. I'm a professional. Professional what? So none of this. You'll, you'll never know any of this was here and it'll be stronger uh, than snot when I'm done. But you can see they crushed it all the way down into here. There's a crack line runs all the way across the header panel this way. And there's grazing and all kinds of damage on this side. So now is the time to get to grips with that. Look at all the rock chips on the front of this thing, man. I drove the shit out of this thing on dirt roads back in the day. This was like my General Lee some weekends. I mean, you see these kids nowadays, all they're drifting on the street and whatever. Like, dude, we did it in the dirt. You know, it was all Dukes of Hazard and shit back in those days. So I used to play a lot of Follow My Leader. If you've ever watched Blue Thunder, you'll get that reference. Now you take the Ranger, I'll be in my bird. We'll have a little game. Follow My Leader. Um, but uh, yeah, she's, she's, this is my girl, man. She got some fucking wounds on her, some war wounds. Now, um, the hood hinges are going to be a deal. I'm going to need to probably do something with those, rebuild them or something. They're really, they just, they're really, you guys can see they just need, there's just a ton of 
weirdness in them. They, they flop around this way. I was talking with a buddy of mine last night at my sister's birthday party. Um, and he was saying that he's got it. So he's got a sixties Buick. It's fucking gorgeous. Um, and he was saying that when he puts, when he's got the hood hinges on, the hood closes and everything lines up and it's all perfect. The second he puts the springs on, it's a fucking shit show. And I'm like, Hey, I can relate to that. I'm like, guess what you have worn the fuck out hood hinges. So here's the deal. See these little, see if I can get on camera, see these pins. These are the, these are the, where they, they put the arms together for these. See the backside of these. You just can see that there. So what happens is these wear out, these get a lot of play in them. And once they go under tension, um, it tends to move shit around a lot. They, they don't go up and down like they're supposed to. Um, so I haven't tried pulling the springs off this cause I like my fingers and I don't want to die. So I haven't screwed around with it, but you know, we'll get to it. We'll get the adjustment. Now, the other thing we're going to do, uh, I got to tell you guys, the story is super funny. So I went out and, uh, took it. I was running it up and down the road yesterday, getting, just getting drive time on it. You know what I mean? That's all you really want. Just get some drive time on it. And, um, so I was going up and down the road out here for about 20 minutes and, uh, I'm driving up and down the road and the thing just shuts off. I mean, you, well, it doesn't just shut off. That's not true. It, you can hear it's like, <laughs> like it's running out of gas. So I, I real quick rip, whipped around and got headed back towards the shop and made it all the way back, almost all the way back before it died. And, um, when the car shut off, I was, I was missing a very, uh, particular sound that should be going when the, uh, when the, when the car's not running, but the, but the electrical system is hooked up and, and that is, I couldn't hear the fuel pump running. So, um, I had just done some adjustment on the hood. This was like right after the time-lapse sequence. You guys just watched where I was, uh, uh, you guys just watched where I'm washing the engine. So I, I get the hood and I get it to go all the way down and I kind of get the hood released to work. It's, it's iffy. I tried popping it and the hood just kind of went Kink, and it didn't do anything else. I was like, uh Oh, so I was like, well, whatever happens, I've got to make sure I don't need to get into that hood for the rest of the day. So I'm out driving up and down and the thing dies and it, cause it runs out of gas. The fuel pump's not around. I'm like, shit. So earlier, when I had been cleaning it, the one of the little red wires, and again, see, this speaks to the work you do, the difference in the work you do to just to make something move and to actually drive it. So see this red wire that's just like totally glitched in here, whatever that word is. Um, that's the fuel pump power supply wire. And uh, if you look down in here, it trans, it goes past the, that's the bottom of the exhaust manifold. Um, that wire had come kind of loose and wound up laying on top of that and shorten out. And so it literally, I wired this through the fuse box in an, in an uncharacteristically, uh, uh, thinking ahead kind of move for me. So I got in here and I was looking and sure enough, it, it, it you can see the supply wire coming off there at the accessory hub. So that fuse just to the left of the red wire, that one popped, uh, when it shorted against the, uh, exhaust manifold. So I had to, Spend about 10 minutes trying to finagle my hood open, which was a whole thing. Um, and uh, I got the wire off the manifold and uh, it turned out I had uh, some fuses, just extra, just <clears throat> got some extra ones just laying in the, uh, laying on the floor in here, just some extra fuses. So I just grabbed one of those, literally so ghetto, um, and, uh, and popped it in, fired it right back up, went for another cruise up and down the street, annoyed the neighbors as much as possible. And then and then came back and parked it. But this is what I'm talking about. This is the stuff that you're, when you're in that transition from, yeah, it's being dry stored in the desert for 25 years to, hey, I'm going to drive this thing again. So, uh, so that was, that's what happened yesterday, actually. Uh, it didn't strand me, it, but uh, we had a failure because the idiot with the wrenches didn't know how to run a fucking wire. <laughs> I'm just enthusiastic. Don't yell at me. I want to drive my car. Um, so that's about it for this weekend. I'm going to go get some stuff to do that body work. And I'm also going to, uh, get some sandpaper and, and get these areas addressed. These are actually pretty flat. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with these, but I still have like a lot of work to hammer and dolly all there's, there's a lot of dolly work to do here. This is 
creased off pretty good. Again, I believe this was a pry point when they were trying to get the hood open to steal the original engine. Um, so likely that's what it is. And then I've got to, I've got to address these areas where I welded up the holes for the, uh, hood trim that I removed because we will be taking that off this included, which is going to leave me knowing GM, there'll be four fucking holes, all half inch diameter under this goddamn piece of trim. That's as long as my finger. So I'm sure I've got 97 holes to fill on that. Um, these were my old hood pin holes, obviously. So we just, there, I've got them. I didn't really metal work them. You guys can see there's still some work that needs to be done on this one for sure. And then the big one down here where we had the giant crease in it. Now I've got most of this roughed out. Um, it's still really super high right here. I don't know if you guys can, can see that wave. It's about the size of the one that hit, uh, Japan after the uh, earthquake. <laughs> it's huge. Um, but my plan will be what we're going to do. So we're really high right here. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and heat shrink this down and we'll do a whole video on that when I get around to it. Um, but basically we'll apply heat in these areas on either side and then quench that. And as that con contract, uh, God damn it, contracts, constricts, as the metal draws together, it'll take that high spot out. Trust me, it'll work. Whatever the word is, contracts. The, the metal will contract because it's hot and then you're quenching it with cold water and it'll suck together and it'll it'll yank this high spot out. And then we can finish up our welding and then we've got a new piece of trim to put on here. Again, thanks to Travis, half the car. I'm just going to call the car Travis. I fucking swear to God. Um, but we've got a really cool piece off of his Laguna. It actually fits pretty good. Um, it just, the radius at the end is just a little off. I gotta, I gotta bend it, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. If you heat up stainless with like heat lamps and then clamp it up, you can actually manipulate stainless trim pretty well. That's a, that's a whole other video I'll, we'll do anyway. So then all this side trim needs to come off. Uh, I am going to leave the door handles and locks for now, although ultimately they will get shaved off. Uh, but for now they'll, they'll stay. Uh, just, <laughs> just cause I need handles and door locks. Um, uh, but, uh, the good news is, is that the, the air shocks are really holding up. Like they were pretty leaky, but I've, I, I aired them up back. What was it like a month ago when we did the brakes on this thing? And honest to God, I mean, I think they've leaked a little bit, but for th what are they? 35, 36, 37 year old fucking air shocks that haven't had air in them for two decades. They're holding 110 pounds. Pretty goddamn good, man. Let's hear it for pet boys, air shocks. All right, guys, um, I think I'm going to wrap it up at this point. I'm going to I'm gonna go grab some bodywork stuff, and if I get to work on some of this, I'll share it with you, but if not, that's going to wrap it for this week. Kind of just more updates and walk around um, and progress, but I'm so stoked, guys. I'm so stoked, man. This thing's running. It's going to be a beast. I, I told Tony this morning, I was like, if this motherfucker had exhaust, like we just went and had breakfast. Um, if you guys follow my Instagram, it's at thrust you can trust on Instagram. Um, uh, if you, uh, if you guys saw that, I was just out for breakfast and uh, I was telling Tony, I said, I said, you know, God damn it. If this thing had exhaust on, I swear to God, I don't, I don't give a fuck. Look, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck that it's been, it hasn't been licensed since then. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking driving it to breakfast. Fuck you guys. So if it had had exhaust, this motherfucker would have gone to Denny's this morning. So I'm really excited. It's, it's really close. Um, next summer is going to be a blast, man. We're going to have so much fun with this thing. I can't wait. So uh, come on back next time, guys. Thanks for sitting through this whole thing and all my wordy bullshit and everything else. I love you guys. I really hope you enjoy these videos. I enjoy making them. Like I said, this Cutlass stuff, I'm really just doing it as a vanity project for me to document me getting back with my with my high school car, not a car that's like the one I had in high school. This exact high school car, this is what I drove. So I really appreciate you guys watching all this minutia and crap. We got a lot of new content coming on the channel. Um, I've got some developments at work that are gonna uh, lead me to be able to bring some more content to you guys that's appropriate for like street stuff and not so much like, hey, look at us crawling up a rock stuff. Um, so it's shit that you guys will actually enjoy. Um, we're going to Dino's. We're going to Dino's Get Down in, in about three weeks. So really excited. Um, obviously not taking this, but uh, but I'm. We will be going. I'm going to do a whole vlog on it. If you guys look on the channel at the, um, if you look at the uh, Ventura Nationals that I that we went to last year, it'll be like that. 
So we'll just kind of do a vlog and we'll talk and look at really bitching trucks. I've never been to that show. I'm super stoked to go there. Uh, and I'm actually going to be working it for the company. So pretty badass. Really excited for that, man. It's like my whole life is fucking being transformed in front of my eyes. I got a car back on the street and I'm getting to go for the company to actual car shows, not Jeep stuff. So I'm very excited. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right, that's it. We'll wrap it up for this week, guys. Like I said, thanks for everything. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for, you know, chilling with us and watching all this crap. And uh, I hope you're getting something out of it. If you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe if you're into it. Um, if for nothing else, it's like, hey, look at the fat, dumb German kid trying to put an Oldsmobile together. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else, it's got to be pure comedy, right? Jesus. All right, guys. Super cool. Well, uh, I've got a uh, new fits behind the wheel coming this week. And like I said, we're prepping, ramping up to go to Dino's plus more work on the Oldsmobile. So uh, come on back and uh, thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next time.